Well, about eight months ago tomorrow, I was in Siena, Italy, looking at this painting in this room. That was the same day that Italy went into its quarantine just in the north. And the way those two are connected to me is something I want to talk about today inside the context of long wave cultural effects. First, though, you've got to see Siena. This is the first landscape painting since the Roman Empire. It's also the first or the last painting since the Black, before the Black Death. But Siena has so much more going on than that. In 1260, Siena was a republic. That's the same time this pulpit was carved, reviving Roman sculptural tradition. And in 1310, it wrote the first vernacular constitution, about the same time this 15 by 16 foot altarpiece was developed. So what is going on that makes Siena such a big deal? It's actually globalization from the Mongols who connect Europe and Asia and have these trade routes. And Siena goes in for luxury goods and banking. You can actually see some silks and some tartar writing there behind the Virgin and the altarpiece. But it's not like everything's all sweetness and light in the world. There's still mercenary warfare and all kinds of mayhem and around Siena and rebellion in Siena. So this group of rulers, these elites called the Nine, decided they better get some allegory going on and they hire a painter and they comes up with a plan. And if you strip, strip away the angels, a lot of it's kind of familiar. Wisdom from heaven dispenses justice. The people agree there's a wise ruler, the nine, and he provides peace. Peace actually sleeps on armor in that picture. What happens if there is no justice? Well, stop me if this seems familiar. There's tyranny. It's a narcissist. He's full of selfishness. He's surrounded by these people who just want to sow discord and violence and make life hell for everyone. It's terrible to live there. And if you're a 14th century Christian, it's worse than that. You're not just in this lonely environment where it's every man for himself. The only way you can live in a world like this is to sin, which means you're going to go to hell forever. That sounds like a really bad deal. What happens if there is justice in the world? Well, it turns out people work together under justice. There's community. And more than that, the seven arts are revived. What God designed for us to work and find meaning in the world so we can ascend. Even those theatrical dancers are chasing away the worms of melancholy. You can see them there on the gown. Well, good mission statement, the nine, but plague comes in 1346, races across Europe, kills like the Dickens sometimes in just a day, wipes out 30% of the population, sometimes worse in places than others. Take, for example, Siena, which lost 50 to 70% of its population in just a couple of years. In fact, it didn't recover its population until about 1950, which is one reason it's such a great place to visit today. But then let's open up the lens a little wider because the plague doesn't end in five years. The plague actually goes for about 350 years, flaring up every generation or so. People are arising and you know hearing about these terrible deaths somewhere near them. And this is a long wave effect that changes the consciousness in Europe. You start to see it very soon after where there's an isolation. Asia is a, a distant place we're not in contact with anymore. We don't really know what's going on. There's an uncertainty. And out of this, we create this new world of individuals. And it's not all bad because in the Renaissance, we start celebrating great individual artists and we um, thinkers as diverse as Martin Luther and Machiavelli right against each other 150 years later are talking about the individual and God or the individual who's on his own and how that creates the state. And they all have plague stories. Dig deep. Everybody's got one. Shakespeare's birthplace lost 20% of his population when he was a baby. He goes on to event new emotional experiences. Galileo relocates our rock. And Newton's on a plague break when he comes up with gravity, optics, and calculus. Oh, <sighs> modernity. So there I am. Eight months ago tomorrow, having my dinner and thinking about how all this came together, art and religion and politics. And just a couple days later, something kind of rhymes in history. That's right, COVID. Now, COVID is not the Black Death. It's not lethal like that. But I posit that COVID is happening during a new long wave, what I would call the age of hyper-awareness, where we have social networks and science and sensors and massive computation, cloud computing, including my boss insert, um, virtual disclaimer here. We virtualized ourselves inside this pandemic with fascinating and great results. But if we really have hyper awareness, maybe we can also be aware of history and how we will change our consciousness and be mindful of that. And remember that without peace and justice, tyranny and selfishness rule and everyone's disconnected. Like say, if you politicize a disease and we all start fighting with each other. But let's remember the other wall and how some of the secret to life is to find meaning in work and each other to find each other essential. Let's bake that into this new long wave of hyper-awareness and hope for the best. Thank you so much. Thank you, Quentin. 
And what is the one takeaway you want everyone to, to uh, walk away from this talk with? History rhymes in beautiful ways. We can learn from that.